hello and welcome to the show. In today's Hill Climb Monster, we have got something that I know is going to be absolutely crazy. This is the Holden Ute. Uh, many numbers FX Ute is actually its full name. And I have a sneaking suspicion exactly how this one is going to go. Uh, there is going to be a lot of power, not much grip, and will be incredibly difficult to drive up the uh, mountain. However, I'm okay with that. It might be very fast. The power to weight ratio is likely to be pretty mental, because this thing isn't massively heavy to begin with. 2,200 pounds for something as large as this. Okay, the all-wheel drive is going to make it a little bit heavier, but uh, yeah, it's going to have tremendous power to weight ratio and DD tyres. So fantastic. Our engine options are... Uh, 6.2 litre V8 is pretty much what we're going to use. You can put in a 3.2 i6 or the turbo rally engine. However, we're going to get the most performance out of the V8. The i6 tops about 700 horsepower. The turbo rally engine is mid 400s, I think. Um, but yeah, we're going for <laughs> we're going for the V8. Uh, tire wise, I believe, unfortunately, like you, you look at this, and I would expect and I would hope for it to get big tires. If I remember correctly, though, it's not. It's not the case whatsoever. Oh God, 205s at the front. That's filling me with confidence. And the back better be bigger, only slightly. 225s. Now, I know this V8 is going to get a 1,000 horsepower, can get a 1,000 horsepower in it. Now, whether this will be able to in the PI, I don't know. I kind of think it probably will, to be honest with you. I'm not expecting, because I mean, we're basically done in terms of handling parts now. I might as well go through with stick at all of the uh, kind of gearbox and, and drivetrain parts. We need brakes. That's going to be quite, quite important. We need off-road suspension, also going to be quite important. Uh, race anti-roll bars and so on. Try and, well, stiffen the chassis some on the wobble mobile, but there's no, no, never going to be enough, I don't think. Weight is down to 2,200 pounds again. And we are actually at the very, very tippy top of A-Class. I mean, that's not too terrible. Uh, we will want, before I forget, we will want the uh, Forza Aero parts. Anything that might possibly give me half a chance at some grip. Yeah, I want it on my car. Uh, conversions, we will probably be going for some twin turbos. On here, I'm suspecting we're going to... Ooh, we could go supercharger, though. Ooh. Let's go... I, I think we're going to do up. We'll come back to that. We'll fully build the engine and then see what PI we have left to play with. Uh, if if we have got to kind of be careful with PI, then I might go supercharger for the immediate power delivery. If we need all the horsepower that we can get, then the turbos will be the way to go. I think this engine... Um, gets more power from the turbos than it does the supercharger. Judging by the way, the PI isn't really shooting up here. Well, at all. I say at all, actually. We are now halfway through S1 class. Um, we are going to need some turbos uh, or, or a supercharger. So why did I do that? We do want that. It does add a little bit of weight, but we want the power that we can get. So, the choice is uh, yeah, turbo or, or the supercharger. Let's go and grab the turbos for this one, and we should be getting over a thousand horsepower out of this engine, if I have remembered correctly. 970, okay, intercooler, please be the thing to do it, and we are going to a thousand and sixteen horsepower. Amusingly, no PI change. <laughs> thousand and sixteen horsepower in our Holden Ute it weighs just two thousand four hundred pounds. That is massive power to weight ratio in this. That's a, that's a horrendous amount on absolutely tiny tyres. Not quite the smallest that have gone up here, but certainly one of the smallest. I think I'm going to die trying to get this car amount in. I, I think that is going to be the end result here. I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure I am prepared for the UT UT death that is about to befall me. However, we are at the bottom of the Devil's Corners hill climb. I'm going to get three runs up this course to try and go as fast as possible. Now, I'm not expecting this to be getting anywhere near the top of the table. In all honesty, the closest cars I can compare this to are the Subaru Brat and the Honda S800, both right down at the very bottom, a 2 minute point eight from the Subaru, a 2 1.3 from the Honda. Those were both cars with horrendous amounts of power, absolutely nothing in the way of control. So, yeah, probably the uh, most likely uh, comparison point for the Ute. 
We are massively fast. In fact, we are so absurdly fast down towards turn one. It's 132 miles an hour before we got on the brakes. But <laughs> there is so much speed. Third gear, I think, is where it's going to have to be at out of these slow corners. Very, very short gear ratios in the uh, ute. It's a weird thing that happens on some of these older cars. It's happened on all of them. Some of the older cars, even when you swap the gearbox, it kind of keeps the gear ratio similar to what we had to begin with, which gives them a little bit of a uh, wonk here. Basically, it just means I'm going to be going in third or fourth out of these corners rather than in second. Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. We're not going to be running out of gears because, well, there's only a couple of straights here. Uh, this is not quite as much depth as I thought it would be. It is, yeah, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Bad things have almost happened there. Uh, it is very, very difficult to drive, but I think it's easier in some respects than the Subaru Brat. Uh, I don't think it's quite that level of crazy. Surprisingly, it does surprise me massively that uh, that is the case. Jump through the air, 110, 111 miles an hour across that section up there with the fastest. Apparently it's the understeer that's giving us more problems than anything trying to get around these corners fast. I really thought we would be wildly out of control, but the front end has so little in the way of grip trying to get it into these corners just does not really work. And we're going to have to have another lift. But now we're not going to be flat out up here. We have been seeing it from a few cars. We're definitely not going to be flat up through here. But again, it's not as terrible as I was expecting. A tool onto the icy straight. And this is where things are likely to get a little bit wobbly for the uh, Holden as we leave. We're not going to carry as much speed on the way in. Doesn't matter when you can accelerate as fast as this. 111 miles an hour across the jump. On to the brakes we go. It's a completely different animal from the Panamera that I drove up last time. Completely and utterly different across the line. Two minutes two on its opening run, but a very, very scruffy run. I think this might be able to go sub two minute. I, I think if I can tame it, we can get it under control a little bit better at least than we did there. I think it can go sub two minute. So, how on earth are we going to find some uh, stage speed in this car? Well, our best bet is going to be focus, well, focus on the areas of the track where the car is strong. So, acceleration. Now, that means we're going to uh, drive it a little bit differently. Slow on the way into the corners because we don't have the front end grip to actually carry that much quarter speed. And then straighten the car up for the exit, make the most of all of that ludicrous power. And I think we can still set you know, a relatively decent time up this course because we do still have, surprisingly, half-decent traction in here. I don't know if I went the wrong side of that flag. We got away with it. I must have clipped it with the rear of the car or something. I've got to try and be as composed as I possibly can. I've got to be trying to be as smooth through this course as I can with a thousand horsepower ute on bicycle wheels. And that's not that's not easy uh, to do around here, but it is a lot more controllable than I feared it uh, might end up being. Brakes aren't great, although I could have actually been a little bit braver there, surprisingly. Oh, well, there we've got all the understeer. Maybe I couldn't have been. <laughs> God damn, this thing is quite mad. Not, as I said, not as mad as it could have been, but still not on the same side. We got really bounced around on the landing there. This is where I do think we will inevitably lose time. This section here is very difficult to take quick. In a car such as this one, we're going left into a right hander. That's never a good sign. But it doesn't matter what you're driving, where you're driving, if you're going left into a right hander, things are not going well for you. We have, though, made it through in one piece. And then at the top of the course, we are trying to go left through a left hander, but it doesn't really turn very well. Onto the icy straight we bound. I think we missed that one. Yep, we're across the ice. Bugger! <laughs> we were doing okay in terms of speed. Yeah, I'd plug it a little bit too, but it's not got the, uh, the small course course corrections almost. That's where we have difficulties, and I'm never making that much speed through there. I thought I'd give it a try. It's all going to come down to a final run once more with this as we're bouncing and bouncing and maybe making a corner just about somewhere. There is a, there is a corner. It could be very sideways if it wanted to be, like this. For example, uh, if you let it be, there is a little bit more control there, though, than, than I was expecting. And I think, yeah, with some, some, decent, some decent lines through the corners, a little bit of care, we can actually get a semi-respectable time out of the car. 
so it is our final run the pressure is once again very much on the holden ute i've really got to try and keep it out of trouble it's a very fine line between i mean i've got to get on the brakes relatively early because hell i've got to get this thing stopped i want to get it turned but i also you know still want to make speed it'd be easy there are two ways to make easy mistakes in this car there is a try to overdrive it you'll waste all of your time going sideways and probably end up bumping into a wall and b there is in attempts to try and be smooth and attempts to try you know break early get the car turned and so on you can end up being quite slow just simply because you're not being aggressive enough you're not being brave enough and uh, yeah they are things that we have got to uh, try and overcome in this particular run we're gonna throw it in towards i'm actually amazed that i had the grip to get away i was fully expecting the back end to just let go on me now we've not drifted out so wide although as i try and get on the power it's just there's no real grip there as we went to accelerate away 124 miles an hour on the brakes though relatively early i don't particularly trust this car uh, trying to get it slowed down into some of these tighter corners we go again up towards the uh, big jump it's not very nice on the landing of the jumps it's not got the smoothest landings we've had but it's also not the worst that we've had either come on find some grip there's no grip out of the uh, hairpin uh, up here we're going to leave it oh second to it a little bit wide on the turn in but we can again we can recover it and we can try and make use of our brutal power potentially on the run up towards the icy straight kind of turn the car in there let it get a little bit sideways it'll work through the checkpoint we go this time around always nice get on the brakes just wait and be patient be patient now we can go for it now we can accelerate towards the jump 113 miles an hour across their huge bounce on the landing for the holden but we are nicely under control once more as we head towards the finish line don't slide out towards the wall don't hit the wall it's across the line i think that was a 59 two in the end it was a 59 two five three we have another tie on our hands God damn it. <laughs> very close to another previous tie as well. I am very surprised by that speed. It'll put the vehicle into a joint 27th place with the Nissan 370Z auto build. It is a fraction. I mean, we're talking half a tenth faster than the Ford Transit. Beats the Fiat 131, the Volvo V60, the Nissan Skyline. Far faster than the Subaru Brat and the Honda S800. I mean, we're talking a second and a half faster than the Brat. Almost two seconds faster than the Honda. So, in fact, over two seconds faster than the Honda, my bad. That's not as bad a time as I was... Uh I was expecting from the Holden. There was, yeah, more control for a thousand horsepower car weighing so little on piddly tyres. That is... Yeah, surprisingly quick. It's all about, you know, making the most of that acceleration, trying to get the car out of the corners, uh, ready to put the power down. The brakes aren't great. The turn-in is generally pretty crap. But uh, if you are patient with it and you don't mess about too much, uh, it's very easy to do in this car, you can actually get some serious speed out of the bonkers, bonkers Holden. Well... That was certainly an experience and a uh, fair departure from that Panamera. It's only, um, what is it, half a second down? In fact, four tenths of a second down on the... No, three tenths of a second, sorry, down on the Panamera. <laughs> Two completely and utterly different cars. Surprisingly similar in terms of uh, stage time. That, though, is going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, uh, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>